Hello everyone and welcome back to Civil Mentors. Today we're excited to present a valuable video for anyone interested in civil engineering. Whether you're preparing for an interview or simply seeking to expand your knowledge, this video is for you. We will cover some of the most frequently asked questions in a civil engineering interview and provide clear and concise answers that are easy to understand. So without further ado, let's get started. Question 1. What is civil engineering? Civil engineering is one of the oldest and broadest engineering disciplines, dating back to ancient civilizations. It deals with the design, construction, and maintenance of the physical and naturally built environment. In simple terms, civil engineers shape the world we live in by creating and maintaining the infrastructure that supports our daily lives. Question 2. What is the difference between concrete and cement? Many people use the terms concrete and cement interchangeably, but they are not the same. Cement is a fine powder made from limestone, clay, and other materials. When mixed with water, it forms a paste that binds and hardens over time. Concrete, on the other hand, is a composite material that consists of cement, water, aggregates, such as sand and gravel, and sometimes additives like fibers or chemicals. In simple terms, cement is an ingredient in concrete, which is used as a construction material for various structures. Question 3. What is the role of a civil engineer in a construction project? A civil engineer's role in a construction project can vary depending on the specific project and their area of expertise. However, in general, civil engineers are responsible for analyzing the project site and its surroundings, considering factors such as soil conditions, environmental impacts, and potential hazards, preparing detailed design plans, blueprints, and specifications for the project, ensuring they comply with building codes and regulations, estimating the cost and time required to complete the project, as well as assessing its feasibility and potential risks, coordinating with other professionals such as architects, contractors, and surveyors to ensure a smooth and successful project execution, supervising the construction process, ensuring that the project is built according to the approved design and within the specified budget and timeframe, monitoring the performance and condition of the completed project, recommending maintenance and repair measures when necessary. Question 4. What are the different types of foundation used in construction? Foundations are essential for transferring the load of a structure to the ground. There are several types of foundations used in construction, and the choice depends on factors such as soil conditions, load requirements, and the type of structure. The main types of foundations include shallow foundations, these are used when the bearing capacity of the soil is adequate at a relatively shallow depth. Examples include strip footings, individual footings, and raft or mat foundations. Deep foundations. These are used when the bearing capacity of the soil is insufficient at shallow depths, requiring the load to be transferred to deeper layers. Examples include piles, drilled shafts, and caissons. Question 5. What is the importance of reinforcement in concrete? Reinforcement in concrete is crucial for several reasons. Tensile strength. Concrete is strong in compression but weak in tension. By adding steel reinforcement, the tensile strength of the concrete is significantly increased, allowing it to resist cracking and failure under tensile stresses. Crack control. Reinforcement helps to control and distribute cracks in concrete, preventing them from growing and leading to structural failure. Durability. Reinforced concrete is more resistant to environmental factors such as freeze-thaw cycles, chemical attacks, and abrasion, leading to increased durability and a longer service life. Load-bearing capacity. The combination of concrete and steel reinforcement results in a composite material with a higher load-bearing capacity, allowing for the construction of larger and more complex structures. Question 6. What is a load-bearing wall and how is it different from a partition wall? A load-bearing wall is a structural element that supports the weight of the building above it, transferring the load to the foundation. These walls are typically made of masonry, concrete, or reinforced concrete and are an integral part of the building's structural system. A partition wall, on the other hand, is a non-structural element used to divide spaces within a building. Partition walls do not carry any significant loads and can be made of various materials, such as drywall, glass, or lightweight masonry. The main difference between the two is that load-bearing walls are structural components, while partition walls are used for spatial separation and have no load-bearing function. Question 7. 
What is the purpose of a geotechnical investigation? A geotechnical investigation is conducted to gather information about the subsurface soil, rock, and groundwater conditions at a construction site. This information is essential for designing foundations, retaining walls, and other earth-related structures, as well as assessing potential hazards such as landslides, liquefaction, or settlement. In short, a geotechnical investigation helps ensure the safety and stability of a construction project by providing data on the ground conditions and allowing engineers to make informed design decisions. Question 8. What are the key factors to consider when designing a road? When designing a road, several factors must be considered to ensure safety, efficiency, and longevity. Some key factors include Alignment the horizontal and vertical alignment of the road should provide smooth and safe transitions between curves, gradients, and intersections. Pavement design. The pavement layers should be designed to withstand the anticipated traffic loads and environmental conditions. Drainage. Proper drainage systems should be in place to prevent water accumulation and minimize the risk of flooding or pavement damage. Safety features. Road designs should incorporate safety features such as guardrails, lighting, and signage to minimize accidents and enhance visibility. Question 9. What is a cantilever bridge, and how does it work? A cantilever bridge is a type of bridge that consists of horizontal beams called cantilevers, supported by piers or abutments. The cantilevers extend from each support and are anchored on one end while projecting outward on the other. The central span of the bridge is typically formed by connecting the cantilevers from adjacent supports. Cantilever bridges work by transferring the load from the unsupported span to the anchored ends, which in turn transmit the load to the piers or abutments. Question 10. What is the purpose of a retaining wall? A retaining wall is a structure designed to hold back soil or rock, preventing it from sliding or eroding. Retaining walls are commonly used to create level or terraced areas on sloping terrain, support roadways and structures, or control erosion along riverbanks and coastlines. By resisting the lateral pressure exerted by the retained soil, retaining walls help maintain the stability of the surrounding area and protect against potential landslides or slope failures. Question 11. What is a green building and why is it important? A green building is a structure designed to minimize its environmental impact by using energy-efficient systems, sustainable materials, and environmentally friendly construction practices. Green buildings aim to reduce energy and water consumption, decrease waste generation, and improve indoor air quality. The importance of green buildings lies in their potential to mitigate climate change, conserve natural resources, and promote healthier living environments for occupants. Question 12. What is soil liquefaction, and why is it a concern for civil engineers? Soil liquefaction is a phenomenon in which saturated, loose, granular soil temporarily loses its strength and behaves like a liquid, usually due to the rapid application of stress from an earthquake or other intense ground shaking. Liquefaction can cause severe damage to buildings and infrastructure, as it can lead to ground settlement, lateral spreading, and foundation failures. Civil engineers need to consider the potential for liquefaction when designing structures in areas prone to seismic activity, employing appropriate foundation and soil improvement techniques to mitigate the risk. Question 13. What is a traffic impact study, and when is it necessary? A traffic impact study is an analysis conducted to assess the effects of a proposed development or land use change on the surrounding transportation network. It evaluates factors such as traffic volume, road capacity, intersection performance, and pedestrian and bicycle access. A traffic impact study is typically required when a new development or major land use change is expected to generate a significant amount of traffic, potentially leading to congestion, safety issues, or infrastructure needs. The findings of the study help inform decision makers and engineers about necessary improvements, such as road widening, traffic signal adjustments, or the addition of pedestrian facilities to mitigate the impacts of the development on the transportation system. Question 14. What is the role of a project manager in a civil engineering project? A project manager in a civil engineering project is responsible for overseeing and coordinating all aspects of the project from inception to completion. Their primary role includes defining the project scope, 
goals and deliverables, as well as establishing a detailed project plan and schedule, managing the project budget, ensuring that resources are allocated efficiently, and tracking costs to prevent overspending, coordinating with various stakeholders, such as clients, contractors, engineers, and regulatory authorities to ensure clear communication and timely resolution of issues, monitoring project progress, making adjustments as necessary to keep the project on track, and ensuring quality control and adherence to safety standards. Evaluating project performance and conducting post-project reviews to identify areas for improvement and lessons learned. Question 15. What are the primary differences between precast and cast in situ concrete? Precast and cast in situ concrete are two methods of concrete construction that differ in the way the concrete is formed and cured. Precast concrete is produced in a controlled factory environment, where individual components are cast and cured before being transported to the construction site. On the other hand, cast in situ concrete is poured and cured on site in custom built formwork. Precast concrete generally offers better quality control, as the factory environment allows for consistent production conditions and close monitoring of the concrete mix and curing process. On the other hand, Cast in situ concrete provides greater flexibility in design, as it can be easily adapted to complex geometries or changing site conditions. That's all for our today's session on civil engineering interview questions and answers. We hope this information has been helpful and easy to understand. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Good luck with your interviews and stay tuned for our next video.